Hello guys, uh, friends, family, uh, internet I guess. Welcome to my new channel. My name is James and I want to show you around my very, very simple camper conversion, I guess you could call it, I've done on my Nissan X-Trail. And um, the reason I want to show you around it is because I know a fair few people are pretty interested in this topic of converting cars to, to live in. I'm going to show you what I've done to the car, why I've done it, why I chose this car and perhaps not a van like a lot of people have suggested and also what some of my plans are, uh, I, plans because I don't really have a solid plan, I have a general direction I want to head in. I'm currently in Dartmoor National Park, it is absolutely gorgeous, it's a beautiful day. I apologise for any um, wind noise, this is my first video I've ever filmed, uh, I don't know what I'm doing, I feel hilarious talking to a camera. That being said, I'll show you around my car and um, yeah, talk to you about it. Here she is. I haven't named her yet. So any suggestions, that'd be nice. I don't really name cars anyway, but I'll, I'll show you a quick walk around of the exterior of the car first. I've done very little to the exterior, but I'll walk you around anyway. She is a 2006 Nissan X-Trail. She has a 2.2 litre diesel, I think. And in terms of exterior additions I've made, pretty much I've added these wind deflectors on the window, not necessarily for the wind like they're used for. I've added it so at night when I'm sleeping in the car, which I'll show you later, I can crack all my windows about an inch to get some good airflow to help you know deal with condensation. And rain can't come in through my cracked windows and also people can't necessarily see that my windows are open, which is a good thing. On the roof, I have a 110 watt solar panel. Um, I can't remember the brand, I just bought it off Amazon. And on the other side of the car, I have what I think is a about 210, 220 litre uh, roof box. <laughs> For privacy and for insulation, as you can see, I have some window shades here and these were custom made and measured and templated by me. And then um, a friend of a friend who's a seamstress did the sewing because I could never do that in a million years. Um, inside here is I think about eight, six or eight mil of foil backed foam. Back on the outside because it doesn't actually look like there's any shades or window covers. It just looks like the interior of the car is black, which I like so people you know, uh, they don't walk past, see the foil window covers, think perhaps there's someone camping or sleeping in there. It gives, you know, really helps with privacy. And that should insulate me from the cold, from the heat. Hopefully it should reduce the amount of um, condensation in the mornings. And uh, I can already tell you it makes a big difference on hot days. I'm super happy with it and it works well. Also, if you can buy them for your car, buy them. Because templating this was an absolute nightmare. Don't recommend it. It was a way bigger job than I thought it was. So buy them if you can. And now I think the bit that everyone is interested in and curious about, uh, the interior of the car. And I'll give you a, a walk around and while I'm doing it, I'll explain my decision making, why I did those things and uh, why it looks so simple. It looks simple because it is and because I have no idea what I'm doing. I've never done much woodwork before. So uh, it was all done with pretty, much, pretty basic hand tools and power tools. So it's nothing special, but I'll show you around. I chose to make one main box, which is this plywood box. And the reason I did that is this box isn't attached to anything. I can therefore remove this box with relative ease. It's heavy, but I can do it. And then I can lift up this patch because under this patch is the spare wheel. That being said, on top of the box, I have a, another platform here which my single bed light uh, lays on, and I'll show you my modular bed setup later. In this box here, I have a couple things. I'm pretty proud of it, if I'm honest. I have storage, the depth of it here, which Tubware tubs conveniently fit in. In the bottom here, I have a fold-out table that I can remove and set up and cook on or, or do work on or just anything, anything you need a table for. But the bit I'm most proud of is my pull-out kitchen, which I'll demonstrate now. I wanted it to be quick and easy to set up because I'm going to be living out of this. I didn't want to have to do an elaborate setup every time I wanted to make food. So my cooktop is on a slide-out drawer here. It's just wood against wood. It's nothing fancy, but it does the job and it's relatively stable. 
I can slide that out and there's my cooktop ready to use. I can just ping it open. And I'm relatively protected by the boot lid, but I also have a, a, an awning, which I'm gonna show you later. Moving on from the kitchen, I'll show you my fridge set up and my power, how I power it. I have here, <laughs> it looks a bit blinged out at the moment because I made a custom insulated cover for it. It looks terrible, but it does the job. So <laughs> just ignore the aesthetics. But <laughs> this is an Alfie Cool CF35, if I remember correct, in here. And it stores all my essentials like water and chopped garlic, uh, everything you need to survive. Uh, <laughs> this is on a very janky base, which is bolted in to the original um, frame bolt. So it's pretty secure. That is powered by the Jackery. And I'm going to get the Jackery out and show that to you. This Jackery is a bit of a beast. Um, I'm not going to go on about it too long because there's about a thousand reviews on the internet about them. It cost a pretty penny. It was about a thousand pounds, but it'll save me a lot of time and a lot of tears, I reckon, trying to get that set up. It's super versatile. I get charged input from the solar panel, which I showed you earlier. I have a cable routed from that to the inside of the car. So I can get input from that and I can also plug it into the car's car charger and um, get charged through that. Now, uh, I'll show you my bed setup. It's an interesting one. And the reason I wanted to show you the fridge and everything beforehand is because the fridge dictates the height of the bed. And I know it doesn't look like there's too much room here, but there is enough and I'll demonstrate that later. So, as you can see, it's a single bed. When it needs to be a single bed and when it needs to be a double bed, it can be a double bed. And I'll show you how that works. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, when it's just me on my own, I have it as a single bed here and it means I have full access to the fridge. I don't have to start removing parts of the bed to get to the fridge. It'll be good for midnight snacks and just, just general eating. It's a four inch mattress, three inches of dense foam and uh, a one inch of memory foam. It's super comfortable. And I'll somehow try and show you how I get into it now. Right, um, so getting in this bed's a bit of a, <laughs> it's, it's a bit of a squeeze. I haven't yet found any uh, graceful way of doing it, so uh, bear with me. I'll, uh, I'm going to try and crawl in here. I apologise for what you're about to witness. Oh! It's definitely a squeeze. Once I'm in, the bed length is 181 centimetres, if I remember correct. And I'm only 171. I'm 5 foot 7 and a bit, um, if anyone asks. So the bed fits me. If you're taller than me, um, that is your problem, I'm afraid. This, <laughs> this is made for me and no one else. But I can't complain. I think it's quite comfortable in here. I've got my little lights that work. That's the first time I've tried them. Right, I'm going to try and get myself out again. When I'm out, I'll show you how the double bed works, because that's quite cool, I think. Ah! Uh. Yeah, I'm sure I'll get better at that as time goes on, but. All right, that only takes about two minutes to do, but using those extra bits of plywood and the bis bit of mattress, which fits nicely up in the roof box. Boom, double bed. This side's a bit shorter, so you better be short, but it works, you know, it, it's it's not perfect. It's not a hotel, but, but it's comfortable and it works. If any guests or if my girlfriend want to come spend time with me, which I'm sure she will. Someone else can sleep in, it'll be nice and comfortable for two people. Um, the width is, is the normal width of a small double, um, which is really nice. Right, so one thing I wanted, because I'm leaving in summer and it's gonna be hot, I wanted a shade and awnings were very expensive. So I decided to make my own. I came up with what I think is a pretty cool um, modular tarp idea. And I'll show you how it works. It can go over the back um, so it can, cover the um the, the kitchen area if i want to if i want to shave from the sun or rain and it can also go on the side of the car and act as a you know a, a traditional sort of side awning um for showering i have a 20 liter jug here and i have a small submersible battery powered um shower i bought it off amazon it's like 12 quid and it works pretty well you just plop the uh, pump in there charge this thing up turn it on and there you go water but yeah, it works, you know, I'll just take small bird baths and can't complain, it'll keep me, it'll keep me relatively clean. 
Right, I think I've pretty much covered all the features on the car that I wanted to cover. It's very simple as you can tell. It was all done with basic tools by someone who has no idea what they're doing. Right, I'll quickly go through what my plans are and why I chose this car. Because people always ask me, why didn't you do a van? Why didn't you convert a van? The reason I decided to go for an SUV and a small one, I wanted the 4x4 feature of this car. I want I want to do some off-road trails on my trip. And as anyone in the in the in the UK knows, 4x4 vans here are rare and very, very expensive. And I simply don't have enough money to do a big um a big van conversion. I'd love to do that one day, it is my dream, but you know, you, you gotta make do with what you got at the moment. My plans. Okay, what are my plans? This car isn't a weekend camper. This is my house. I will essentially be moving into this car full time. I've been saving for this trip and planning it on and off in many different ways for the last, I don't know, maybe perhaps even five years. I was originally going to do it on a bike because I didn't have enough money to do it on a motorbike. Then I got a bit more money, thought I'd do it on a motorbike got a bit more money and now I can do it in a car. My plan was always to do some sort of trip in the most comfortable method that I can realistically afford. So what is my trip? East, I guess, in the most simplest form. I want to go east um, from the United Kingdom as far east as I can until I either don't want to do it anymore or I run out of money. So I want to go through Europe, through the Schengen, Schengen zone, whatever you want to call it, through Eastern Europe, through Turkey, Georgia, Azerbaijan, across the um, across the Caspian Sea, and all the way to Central Asia, to all the Central Asian countries, the stands, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, all the rest of it. I feel like this car is the right car to do it in. It's small, with all the window covers in. I can sleep in a truck stop in a in a service station on the side of the road. I can sleep in car parks. It's pretty stealthy. But it also gives me the option to get out there and do some more off-roady trails. And when the weather starts getting worse, I don't have to worry about being only two-wheel drive. Yeah, it's a pretty big trip. I have no idea how long it's going to take. I have no idea what route I'm going to take. My original tentative plan is I want to head down to the south of France to meet my girlfriend. And then I'm going to follow the Alps all the way up through France, Italy, pop up into Liechtenstein, and then I want to go to the Dolomites, do some walking. I love the mountains. For me, that's what I want to explore the most is the mountains. Um, it'll also be cooler in temperature. And this channel is just here to sort of document me. It's mainly for family and friends to track me, but whoever wants to, they can. Um, I think it's going to be quite an interesting trip. I've bought myself a drone. I was going to try to take some nice drone shots, but the wind's coming now and the sun's gone. But the general plan is east to Central Asia over the course of however long it takes. Um, it'll be an adventure. It'll be a real adventure. I'm super excited for it. So I have no idea what I'm doing in terms of YouTube. I feel ridiculous talking to a camera. If any of you want to follow along with me, um, you know, subscribe and I'll be making videos as often as I can. I still haven't figured out how to edit yet, so don't expect anything fancy. Maybe the editing will get better over time. Maybe it won't. I don't know. It's probably going to be pretty raw. Um, but yeah, come along with me and we'll see um, see what the world has to offer. I'm sure it'll be good.